Hi, uh, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory. A uh, very wet day today, or a raw day today, so it's a great day to be in modelling and everything else. Um, quite a busy week. We've been working obviously on the Spitfire, which is basically all done. This is the Airfix uh, Spitfire, the Supermarine one that we've been working on. It's just about finished, so um, part two will be up on the site. Part two basically covers uh, the sanding, doing the cockpit. We've um, installed harnesses, simple ones we made out of Tamiya tape and things like that. And I've got a clip for you guys coming up for that uh, a little bit later on. First of all, we need to have a quick run through on uh, a couple of things on the forums to catch up on things. Uh, first of all, a uh, quick run through of all the group builds and SIGs. Um, see, all written on the envelope. Okay, we've got the World War II group build. That's going to finish on the 18th of September. So by my reckoning, you've probably got around about three weeks now. I know it's the 18th of September, I'm on holiday 18th of September. Um, so anyway, uh, that's going to be finishing very, very soon. So if you've got some entries that are almost there, really guys, get, get the arson gear on those, get them done, get them finished, get them up on the site. There is medals this time for everybody who takes part. I remember last time we did the t-shirts, uh, but I found another company who can do the medals. So there will be medals for everybody and a something from the sanding uh, skinny range or something like that uh, I'll sort out, which will go out to everybody who completes. Um, uh, overall winner, I'm not sure how we're going to work that yet, but obviously a little bit closer to the time I have a word with the actual guys who have been running this sort of group build and we'll talk about it like that. The one after that is actually going to be the uh, airliner stroke transport group build. So we're saying airliner, really it should be just transport. As we said before, it could be anything from a... Um, a cargo ship, passenger liner ship, um, airship, uh, helicopter that carries troops, um, you know, as long as it's not a gunship, uh, then obviously planes, any type of transport, obviously airliners, then we're talking cargo planes. As long as it has got a primary role as transport, okay, then that's what it is. So you can't have something like a Hercules as a gunship because that's not its primary role. Primary role has to be troop transport. So as long as it can carry sort of more than four people or something like that, then it's fine, okay? So that has to be its primary role. So I said it could be anything from a truck to a boat to a helicopter, anything you like. So it's quite a nice broad one with this. So it should give it a lot of scope for a lot of you guys to do some weird and wacky stuff as well. Um, the Allied group build um, for the armour is currently going on. That's going on to the 6th of November, so we've just got under three months on that one. And the other one, which seems to have got everyone's attention at the moment, is the Swedish SIG. Now, this one has been in the wings for absolute almost years now, um, and we finally got it up there. So that's going to be up, is up there and moving on. We've got loads of dragons and vigans and some real wacky stuff as well. So it's great to see that one taking part. Very specialist little niche one there, but it's great that everyone's sort of embracing that and moving on with it. So that's those. Now, Obviously, we have the armoured one for Allied Armour. Um, just been a little bit busy, and obviously doing the videos is very time-consuming, but I will sit down and probably do one this weekend for that. I've got a bit of time this weekend, being a bank holiday, so I'll settle down and I'll put a video montage together of everyone's great work. So that should be up on next week's show, so something to look forward to for that one. Um, other thing as well on the forum, what we spoke about was, um, when we were all at RF Odium, picture here, nice one, the RF Centre, this was the official photo, just whilst I mention it, anybody wants a copy of this one who was there, two things, pop along to the forum, I've got it up in the forum, but it's only a small 800 pixel one, um, should put your names down, because I can't remember everyone's names to be honest, stick you down and I'll do an official thing underneath for it, um, but secondly, shoot me a PM in the forum, just with your email address to send it to, because we've got a nice big one um, that comes through and then you can print off at your end and everything else like that for that photo, so um, just a little thing there, but it's a great little photo and everything. And if you didn't know, we actually raised over a thousand pounds for that. So absolutely fantastic. Um, the other thing as well, name. So if you want, um, a lot of you obviously got um, avatars of various things up there. Um, and then obviously you've got your usernames. Now usernames can be over absolutely, you know, montage of everything. Um, so what we said was it'd be quite nice that all new members joining have to do it now. Well, you don't have to, but it'd be really nice if you did. Um, but uh, what you can actually do is use your real name. So in my case, right, it's Philip Flory, but the only person who ever calls me Philip is my mother. So it'd be Phil Flory, okay, as one word. So all you do, capital P, capital F for the Flory bit, together, that becomes your username. That way, everybody knows each other by the first name. If you want to put an avatar picture up of yourself, that's fine. You don't have to. I know a lot of you haven't, which in some way makes it easier because I still can see who's who by just looking at your avatar picture. But that way, it just makes us a little bit more friendly and 
and especially when we're talking about other people's work in a good way, um, you know, that literally we can actually turn around and say, oh, look, Dan's done a great whatever. Everybody knows Dan is, but if you put up some a username, everyone's like, oh, hold on, that's Dan, is it? You know, so it just makes everything a lot more easy. It's dead simple for me to do. So just literally say to me, there's a little thing in the group, in announcements, or PM me and say, I feel, yeah, can you change me too? Put your full name as it appears, okay? I'll change it on the forum and I'll change it on the main site because they have to be linked together you see so when you just log into the main site to watch the videos and everything else just use that as well so it's like Phil Flory one word okay to log into both so it's very simple there's not two usernames there's not two everything else it's just one all those things it just makes things a lot more friendly a lot more easier uh, and straightforward and everything else and also when people say to me oh there's a problem with my account and things like that it's a lot easier for me to sort of you know marry the forum up to the main site and everything if you're using your real name and obviously if it ties in with PayPal that's even better because everything's real dead simple just type your name in and all your details come up so anyway that is about that um, there's a couple of things I'm going to do now first of all uh, one of the guys on the forum is having a bit of trouble with his airbrush and it has it jamming and stuff like that so I'm going to show you a little bit about that okay so in the interest of making this sort of work what I've actually done is I've let my needle jam okay so I've left a tiny bit in there uh, and I left it in the Sun yesterday afternoon and it's dried all night so now the needle is not totally jammed, I probably could pull it out, but it's enough to show you what I mean. So obviously you can push down for air, okay, but when you pull back, there's actually nothing there, okay? Easiest way is to clear something like that. Whip your front off, so obviously depending which one you need, if you need tools, obviously this is the harder and steam back with the evolution. Got the nozzle there and the air cap. You've got the needle exposed, okay? Unscrew the back, undo the collar, okay? And with one firm tap, okay, you can knock it out and then you can actually see it here you see this dark area just down here you see it on there that is the bit which is actually jammed so when you sort of compare it to where it is it's usually just behind the actual needle area itself so it's usually just behind the color cup here it's not normally the front area it's just behind here you've got, actually got a washer or something in there that's where it jams to sometimes it's at the front but normally it's this little washer in here that stops the paint coming down back down there that's where it's jammed so obviously it's on there like that easiest way to clean that and the fastest just grab yourself a little bit of cellulose thinner so i'll just bring this out literally just a drip on a cloth Okay, always going outwards, never pull it towards you because you bend the needle. You can clean that rubbish off, okay, and there it is, all on the paper towel. So you just do it like that. Check your trigger is fine and is really snappy, okay, and you should be able to just reassemble the front. Front goes in, screw that up. Needle comes in the back to the front little tap still just a little bit there's obviously something in there there we go We've cleared it now just by snapping it around you should be fine then take some acrylic thinners got to be careful because I've got a model on the go literally just half a mil down in the color cut and we're just going to blow this through pulsing okay don't just draw it all the way back because you want to see the trigger and that should just loosen up now if you've got air bubbles coming up through the top all that is is you've just got a tiny gap at the front just make sure you tighten up this front okay because all it is is recycling the airs coming down the back because it's easier than going out the front okay and there we go you should be fine now what I tend to do he says grabbing his a tiny bit left in here I must admit got another one somewhere what I tend to do when I've finished airbrushing okay we're fine like that I come along and I put a tiny dribble in the end here like that, blow it out until it disappears from the air cup. So when you look down in here and you're looking in the end, when it disappears off the needle, he says, trying to get the camera to lock in. Come on guys, camera hates it at this range. Let me just pull this off. 
there we go when you see down in the needle and you actually see the fluid disappear I stop okay what that is it's allowing it just to sit in this front area just there it just keeps it moist okay it shouldn't drip and even if you lay it on its side it's not going to flow over out and all the rest of it because literally it's just a tiny bit it just keeps that needle area lubricated stops it drying out going hard and jamming your trigger it's all fully designed to have things in as long as you haven't got cellulose thinner sat in there or liquid reamer which is going to eat all your seals if you use a little bit of um, airbrush cleaner, yeah, add a little bit of water to it to thin it down a little bit more. That way it's fine. When you come to airbrush, pull the trigger, blow it out like that. You should find every time you're good to go, you've got a good snappy airbrush and you're ready to paint. Also, it keeps everything in that front nozzle area just particularly nice and clean. Okay, so I hope that sort of, you know, helped a little bit. I know a lot of people don't like leaving um, thinners in airbrushes and things like that when you're cleaning everything else. Obviously for me, it's great. I've got mine right here and it sits here and I probably use it probably three, four hours a day, almost every day, okay? So it doesn't have time to dry out like it would be if it sat in a drawer for perhaps a few weeks between spray jobs. But what you do, if it's kept upright, and if you've got a cleaning station like I've got, like here, if you have got it sat in there like that, it just stops it drying out and going hard and all the rest of it. So, and it won't harm it, as long as you've used, you know, don't put cellulose thinner through it, because it will start eating through all your seals and that. But if you've just got a mild airbrush cleaner in there, perhaps water it down 50-50, then what it'll do, it'll just sit there very nicely, keeps it lubricated, so when you do pull that trigger back, it'll blow that rubbish out that's it, sat in there. You can put your cleaner through, quick clean before you spray and away you go again and it just stops everything going rock hard with it obviously if you have put it upright it's easier but you can light it down because it won't trickle out because you're only talking literally a tiny bit when it's in the actual needle area I know a lot of people are probably going to go around now and say oh you shouldn't do that or read through it but as long as it's mild it's all designed to have fluids in it and it'll be absolutely fine anyway here is part a little bit of part uh, eight as I call it which is about sounding which I think you'll find a little helpful Okay, so the next section we're working with is actually the wings. Now, there's a couple of things to really point out on this. Firstly is when you're um, putting kits together, your biggest problem is, is what we call ejector pin marks. Ejector pin marks are areas on the model where it's pushed out of the mould. So you have to imagine you've got a big old mould, okay, it goes in, gets injected whilst it's still warm and it's cooling, it's pushed out, normally down into a bag or a bin or something, and then it continues to dry there. Trouble is to get it all out in one place without it bending and bowing and all the rest of it. It's got lots of pins all over it that push the entire thing out in one, okay? Now, these make little dents and dips all over your model. Now, some of them stand out a little bit more, and what that is, is in the mold, they're slightly sunk in. The ejector pins retract a little bit too far, making a little step. Now, they are a part of life with modeling. There's no real way of getting away with it without having them. Trouble is, sometimes they can be in in areas you don't want them, and technically, perhaps you don't even see them. So you think, well, okay, we've got two bits of the wing here. It says in the instructions to put them together. You put them together like so goes together quite well but when you look there's a little gap just on the end here okay just in there and you think well what that's not really right why is that it's not going together particularly well on that end and when you open it up you can see we've got ejector pin marks so if you can see them catch them in the light uh, you can see them on there there we go so you've got one each side and you've got them down here now the ones down here we're not worried about at all because obviously they're not touching the ones up here we are because they are very very prominent and raised and the thing is here we are on the other side catch them in the light you can see the other two now these are only probably quarter of a millimeter tall but that makes a difference of half a millimeter when they're together so when you come along you stick them together and you end up with this big groove at the end okay so it's pretty unsightly what you don't want to do is just come along with, you know, perhaps something like a big old sanding stick like this and start carving away at it because the chances are you're going to take too much out with it, okay? And you're going to end up with a gap anyway because you've sanded the front ends off as well. So what you want to do is something around about the sort of happy medium boat between them. Now for this I like to use obviously a thinner sanding stick purely because then when we come in like this, um, you know, we don't want to go across it, we want to go this way, that way we're not going to touch the leading edge of it. So all we do, put it on down flat, okay, and just sand the actual ejector pin mark out. And I said, it's only probably a quarter of a mil tall, 
and we can just sand it out until it goes. But we're not touching that leading edge. That way it's still going to be together. And we can do the rear part exactly the same way. There again, not getting too close to the rear. You can tell when it's flush because it will disappear. You'll see it as you're sanding it because there'll be shiny bits around it okay but if you can use a thin sanding stick or if you haven't got any just cut one down that way you won't make any damage because if you were coming in with this you're going to go off the corners but because i can get in with a thinner one you can do this without making any damage so we've got that side out of the way okay you just do the same on the other take them out and you should find Obviously that's just a quick rough job. When you pop them together this time, you can get the, the line up, you get the right ones around the right way, might even help. There we go. When you put them together now, we've got no seam at the front and at the back it's a nice fit and everything else. And that is the harnesses. All we've got here is some, this is jammy dog tape to be honest. Now this comes on a roll and it's very, very thin. This is one millimeter, okay? Now the great thing with this stuff, it's all pre-cut, but what you can do is just put down a thicker tape and then just cut it, okay? But all I've done, I've dipped this into acrylic khaki paint, okay, which gives us a nice strap. And all we need to do is cut a bit off. There's the tricky bit. And we can make very, very simple harness belts okay we can glue these to the top with a little bit of PVA glue or a little bit of super glue grab a tiniest bit of super glue on top of a cotton uh, cocktail stick okay so what we're going to do here is pop around tiniest bit on the top Just grab pierce our area like this and show it up to the camera. Hopefully it'll lock in. Okay, and all we've done, you can probably see it down there, we've just glued that into position at the top, let it totally dry, then we can drag it down as we want it. Okay, let's just do another one. These are deliberately too long because we don't want it to. Get hold of it. We want it to be easier to work our way around it all. And get hold of these; it'd be great. So just coming along the other side, pop another one in. So we need ten pairs of hands. We're just going to pop another one in. Stuck on the thing now. So again, you need a little bit of touching up, but hopefully you'll get the, the gist. They look like that, and then we'll bend them in and everything. Once that super glue's gone off at the top, we can then go around and touch them in. But basically, they're going to sit just down in here like this. Poke them in. Just down in there like that, and it just livens up the cockpit, and we just have them dangling around underneath and everything else like that. But that takes... So, okay, we've moved on uh, a little bit. As I said, we've got the cockpit areas all installed now and they're looking very nice got no problem with the wash is now dried you can probably see it it's faded a little bit and up so you can see it better but you see it gives it that nice grimy look and with the dry brush and it really just brings it to life a bit now the other thing for bringing it to life is something i like to do and that's adding the seat belts now you saw me doing them earlier we said we just paint them up but there we go they're in now you might see I've put my hand here, get a contrast. You might be able to see at the top there, we've got these little harnesses up there. All that literally is, is a tiniest piece of uh, lead wire. We've got some lead wire here. Okay, now all we do is bend it into sort of an S shape, put it over it and then crimp it down. Pretty straightforward, but it just gives it that extra dimension. <clears throat> now the other thing, get the camera to lock in you might be able to see here we've got a little bit left over of the tape that's been painted and it's got the black dots now that's to make make it look like it's got holes in it now obviously you could pierce it with just basically a a, P, a pin or that is just done with a biro pen black biro pen and just put the dots on the, them like that 
And then you can just come along, okay, and then just snip off a, a length you want, like so. Okay, and then this will make the lap belts, if you like. So we just take off a couple of those. But with the little dots, it just sort of brings it to life. So we're just gonna grab a little bit of tape. Just gonna pop that down, taking a tiny bit of super glue. The reason you're using super glue is purely because it just dries instantly. Okay, and then what we're going to do, we're just gonna come along Cocktail stick, <clears throat> okay, or toothpick. Take a tiny bit of super glue on the side of the seat. Now, in theory, I should have done this all first and it would have saved a mountain of trouble that I'm gonna have now trying to get these on. What we do is push down just a little bit, okay, onto the seat. That will hold it then into position, just on the side. And when that dries, we can bend it in and lay it down across the lap. And then what we can do at the same time, we can take a tiny bit of super glue and we're just gonna put it on the back and the lap areas at these belts. So we just do the inside of that one as well. And all we're gonna do is just push him down. Same with the other one, just push him in. Okay, so now they're lying down and looking a little bit more authentic. Got a bit of trouble with the, the inside one, admittedly. It's gonna be a real pain to fit this one. As I said, with a little bit of ingenuity, you should be able to get in there with some cocktail sticks and push this one on. Use the other end of the cocktail stick, remember. You don't want to be gluing yourself on. What you want to do is when you lay them down, just sort of wrinkle them a little bit, you know? So that way they've just got that sort of look to them. And there we go, camera can come in, that's our little harnesses, really simple, it's literally just a, a little thing, just to liven it up. Okay, so that's it for this week, um, as I say, that one's done, so I'm now full time onto the Suffer, I've got to get that finished, I've got three weeks to get that one done completely, which is quite a tall order because it's a big old kit, but really I need the space, I've done lots of bits and pieces on it, but nothing really major construction, so as of next week you'll be seeing me cracking on with that big Suffer, getting that one done just before I go on holiday, as you know, um, I've posted up on the site, but we're away from the 18th for two weeks, so if you're not... Um, um, sort of, if you're thinking of registering or something like that, you're thinking of ordering off the website, do it now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the store, I'm going to lock it to new membership on the site. Obviously, I'll still be hanging around the forum with the old phone and I'm oldie, um, and I'll still be doing emails as well if anyone's got any direct questions. But if you've got problems with things, I won't be able to deal with it because obviously I'm not going to be near a proper internet connection for a fortnight. Um, so, obviously, it'll be a lot easier if we don't have to worry about it. So, if you're thinking of subscribing, you want to subscribe. Subscribe now in the next couple of weeks before we go away. You'll be in solid and all the rest of it. I'm hoping to have the suffer completely done for when I'm away. So you'll probably have about eight parts uh, to watch, about four hours of video whilst I'm away for that time. Until next week, everybody, happy modelling. Enjoy the bank holiday. I hope it's dry for you in the UK and everywhere else. Until next week, bye-bye.